I'm Mark Appelstein, a practicing urologist in Howard County, Maryland. I've been a practicing urologist for over 25 years, and I am a member of Central Maryland Urology. All men are at risk for prostate cancer. The older a man is, the more likely that he will be diagnosed with prostate cancer, but ultimately all men will develop prostate cancer. There are certain men who are at increased risk for developing prostate cancer. Those would include men with a family history, uh, first degree relative, father, brother, uncle, etc. Additionally, African American males are at higher risk to have prostate cancer detected during their lifetime compared to other races. Currently, uh, a male born in the United States has approximately a 3% risk of dying from prostate cancer. He has a 20% risk of being diagnosed with prostate cancer sometime during his lifetime. That does not mean he will die from prostate cancer. What it means is that it's a very common disease, but most people who are diagnosed with prostate cancer do not die from prostate cancer. In terms of preventing prostate cancer, uh, a healthy diet may help prevent prostate cancer. A diet high in fat or red meat has been linked perhaps to prostate cancer. There have been some European studies that have shown that certain antioxidants may be beneficial in prevention of prostate cancer. These would include vitamins such as vitamin D, selenium, and leukopenes. PSA stands for prostate-specific antigen, and what that is, it's a protein made in the prostate gland. This protein is released in the bloodstream, and that is what the PSA blood test is based on. So when you have a PSA blood test, you're measuring the level of this protein or tumor marker in the blood. There are many conditions, though, that can make the PSA elevated. One of those, of course, is cancer, which is why the test is typically done. But the other reasons include trauma, infection of the prostate, or an enlarged prostate. There are many men also who just have an elevated PSA for no reason at all. The first time we see a patient who has an elevated PSA, the number one question in their mind is, do I have prostate cancer? In fact, if your PSA is between 4 and 10, the chance of you having a prostate cancer is only about 25%. The benefit of the PSA test is to identify early prostate cancer at its curable stage. It has been shown that the PSA test goes up approximately five years before you could detect this on a physical exam. Whenever a man has a PSA drawn, he always wants to know what his number is. And when, if he looks at the lab sheet, the lab sheet says four. And that's based on the initial studies back in the early 90s. But over time, urologists have come to understand that actually a PSA level of four may not be a normal level. Typically, a urologist in this area uses age-adjusted PSAs. And what that means is the younger you are, the lower your PSA should be, and the older you are, the higher your PSA is, can be. So for example, if a man in his 40s happened to elect to have a PSA, his PSA should be 2.5 or less. So if I saw a 45-year-old man in my office who had a PSA of 3, I would consider that abnormal and I would discuss with him to consider having a biopsy. By the same token, if you have a man who's 71 who elects to have a PSA, his, his PSA could be as high as 6.5, and some people would consider that normal. Let's say someone elects to undergo active surveillance. What that entails is they are monitored with serial PSAs exams, and intermittent prostate biopsies. If during the time of their active surveillance they seem to progress, meaning that they have more tumor burden, 
then the patient and the doctor need to decide what's the best treatment option available to that patient. The current treatment options include, for example, radical prostatectomy. And in this procedure, the entire prostate is removed and the urinary tract is reconstructed. Pro radical prostatectomy has the highest cure rates to date. Approximately 80% of men are cured for life if they undergo a radical prostatectomy. If a patient chooses not to have a radical prostatectomy or the radical prostatectomy is not a good option for the patient, there are many other options that are available. Uh, two of these involve the use of radiation therapy. One is traditional external beam radiation. The other is brachytherapy. With external beam radiation, this occurs over a several week to six week time frame where the patient gets a daily uh, dose of radiation. Another option is called brachytherapy, and, in, 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 and what this involves is placement of little radioactive seeds or pellets directly into the prostate. The advantage of this procedure is that it delivers an extremely high dose of radiation to the prostate cancer. The disadvantage is that only certain men can undergo this procedure, and that is based on the size of their prostate and whether or not they have any voiding or urinary issues.